WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. A man is in custody tonight after a brazened armed robbery near two Columbus daycares. The holdup happened on Burns Circle just after 1245 this afternoon. Columbus police say the victim was robbed and that a gun was used in the crime. Police Chief Fred Shelton would not confirm what type of gun. He also would not say whether the holdup happened on a daycare property or on the street. Investigators have recovered a weapon. The unidentified man is expected to be officially charged tomorrow. No injuries were reported. A Columbus home is destroyed after a morning fire. Columbus Fire Department Public Information Officer Anthony Cologne says two men were passing by a home on 4th Avenue North this morning when they noticed the flames. No one was at home at the time. Cologne says it took firefighters about 30 minutes to put out the blaze. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. We have an update tonight on a domestic violence incident near Caledonia. 40-year-old Alicia Prather and 44-year-old Gregory Prather are both charged with domestic violence and aggravated assault. Lowndes County deputies were called to a home on Hunnell Mill Road about 7.30 last night. On the way there, deputies learned the caller was being shot at by his wife. When law enforcement arrived, they say Alicia Prather ran back into the home and refused to come out. After nearly an hour, she finally surrendered. Officers learned both suspects had assaulted each other during an argument over their son. A weapon was also recovered at the scene. Time now to turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. He joins us for the first look at our forecast. Keith? Hey, Joey, a live view with our Alpha Insurance Camera Network in Columbus, Tupelo, Vernon, and Louisville shows a lot of sunshine, some friendly clouds out there. No major problems for this evening. It's still warm. You know it. It's been warm all week long. Upper 80s, low 90s right now. We do have some showers and storms back to the west. Now, it looks like these will be weakening before they get here, so we'll warm on ahead of it. Much cooler behind the system coming our way, but we're really not going to see a lot of cooling, and we really won't see a lot of that going forward. But there is a chance for a little bit of rain tomorrow. As we get into our Thursday, uh, 70s to start out, back up to around 90. Joey, your full forecast coming up. For nearly 30 years, a program approved by Tupelo voters sets aside money to improve infrastructure and stay ahead of anticipated growth. Most projects for the major thoroughfare program meet little, if any, resistance. But a recent decision to expand one of those projects has caused some controversy. Our Ellie Martin has an update. I feel really badly about even uh, complaining or addressing any of this because I've always been such a proponent of anything the city wants to do. But Doyce Dees believes it is not in the city's best interest to expand a project of the major thoroughfare program. In 2016, voters approved phase six of that program. One project included construction of a center turning lane on West Jackson Street between Clayton Avenue and Robin Street. Last year, Mayor Jason Shelton asked the Major Thoroughfare Committee to expand that project to include an extra block between Robbins and Madison Streets. Dees and other residents of nearby Highland Circle, the oldest planned subdivision in Tupelo, have voiced their opposition. In cities that I have been in where they've gone through neighborhoods and put in three lanes or even more, you immediately see a deterioration particularly in the homes along the, uh, the thoroughfare. And I, I just think it's a, it's a bad idea. Improvements would also mean sidewalks and underground utilities. The price tag for the work from Clayton to Robbins is $6 million. Adding that extra block would boost the total to nearly $9 million. You know, people typically love progress but hate change. And any time you have... Uh, you know, proposed change literally in your backyard, uh, that can cause uh, some concern, and I totally understand that. Everyone agrees expanding the project from Robbins to Madison would be expensive, but future major thoroughfare plans could call for work on East Jackson all the way down to Front Street. Proponents say delaying the work now would cost more down the road. The cost would be substantially more, especially this underground piece. That's what we have been trying to discuss. Is it in the best interest of the citizens of Tupelo 
uh, and how does that weigh against the neighborhoods? Is there a detriment to the neighborhoods? How do we make that determination? How can we say if this hurts the neighborhood, which we have not seen so far, that we believe it would hurt the neighborhood? Perkle and other members of the Major Thoroughfare Committee will make a decision on the Jackson Street project during a special meeting Thursday evening. In Tupelo Alley, Martin, WCBI News. The Major Thoroughfare Program sets aside a 10 million or 10 mil rather tax to fund infrastructure projects. The program is approved by voters every five years. Well, preparations start today for tomorrow's referendum and special election in Starkville. Voting machines were taken to voting precincts and set up late this afternoon. Starkville residents will vote on a 1% restaurant and hotel tax for a new sportsplex and improvements at other parks. Some will also cast a ballot in the Ward 5 special election. There are a few things voters need to know before going to the polls. They need to come with a voter ID, photo ID. Uh, they need to know where they're going to vote, and that depends on where they live. They vote in the precinct where they live. If they do not know, they can call the city clerk's office. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow. Columbus Air Force Base is temporarily moving a portion of its training to Golden Triangle Regional Airport. More than two dozen T-1 Jayhawk trainer air aircraft rather, are operating out of GTR, while one of the three runways at the Air Force Base is closed for construction. GTR Executive Director Mike Hainsey says the temporary move will help the base keep its pilot training on schedule. The Air Force flights are at, at GTR will continue through November. Hainsey says the extra flight should not have any major impact on the operations at the airport. A fourth round trip flight to Atlanta, it will start next week. Hainsey says 95% of the flights this month have been full. With the additional flight, the airport expects more than 100,000 passengers this year. Hainsey gave that up today, update today at the Kiwanis Club. The airport is also making improvements to accommodate more customers. Yeah, with the uh, construction that's going on right now, we we're just wrapping up a $1.8 million uh, terminal expansion. Uh, we're extending, uh, expanding some parking lots uh, for the additional flight that starts in June. The expansion will allow for 200 extra seats in the terminal. ANC says the fourth flight begins June 8th. And real estate location is everything. And you may be surprised at where some of those prime locations are. We take a look when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. Buying a home can be a nerve wracking experience from choosing a loan to qualifying and even getting an inspection. Our Riley Livingston takes a look at how the area housing market is faring. She joins us live in Columbus. Riley. Buying a house can be a numbers game. Selling price, interest rates, they all add up. But what you might be surprised is that those numbers might actually be, your, be in your favor in this area. A recent study says North Mississippi is a good area for getting a home loan. Smart Asset ranks Lowndes, Octibaha, Lee, and Tishomingo counties in its top 10 for securing a mortgage in Mississippi. JTS and company president Jeff Farnham has been in the mortgage business for over 20 years and knows what drives the market. The demand for housing is really up. We're seeing mortgage rates continue to remain in very low territory, so that's increased, you know, really continues to get people to want to buy and those kind of things. Industrial development and better paying jobs have helped keep homes moving. And Farnham says in this area you can get more bang for your buck. You can live relatively inexpensively compared to other places in the world. You know, you take a 1,500 square foot home in, in Lowndes County, Mississippi, and it's 150000 maybe $135,000 home. You take that same home out in California, maybe five, dollars $600,000, depending on the market you're in. So our cost of living, everything's a little bit cheaper here. Doris Hardy says last year the housing market was the best she's seen in years. I, in my opinion, that 2018 was so good uh, here is, um, you know, we had gone through four, four and a half brutal years during the recession. And the recovery was very slow, I, which is really the way we like recoveries, a slow, steady, annual uptick. 
And so it just sort of culminated into people thinking, okay, we're on the right track. But that success can be a double-edged sword. We are down with listings and we are down with sales. Now, you might think, okay, are we down um, in sales because there are no buyers? Or are we down in sales because we're short on inventory? And we have uh, experienced a shortage of inventory since 2018, which was a very robust year in virtually all of the price ranges across the board, Clay County, Lowndes County, Octibaha. So um, it's not a shortage of demand, it's a shortage of supply. What Hardy says Lowndes County and in the Golden Triangle needs now is new construction. The number of homes being built between the years of 2010 and 2016 has slowly been on the decline. Reporting live in Columbus, Riley Livingston, WCBI News. Right now in Tupelo, 88 degrees, crazy eights here. Winds from the south and southwest about 10 miles per hour. Chance for a little bit of rain tomorrow. Don't get too excited, but the weekend's looking pretty good. We'll talk more about that after the break. The UCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. There's some pretty rough weather out there in the lower 48 right now, so just consider yourself lucky that you live here in North Mississippi and West Alabama where we have had a lot of sunshine, some friendly clouds again today. Yes, we could use some rain around here. It's been pretty dry of late, but right now, not a lot of active weather. There will be a chance for a shower storm tomorrow. We're going to cap it about 30% here. A little bit cooler too, 85 in Pontotoc, 87 in Tupelo, farther south, upper 80s to around 90 in the Golden Triangle area. 87 in Starkville, 86 Ackerman, and for you in the West Alabama too. Winds from the southwest at about 10 to 15, upper 80s to around 90 with a chance for a little bit of rain. But again, don't really plan on a lot of rain. Right now we have no rain around here. We have a big batch of rain that looks quite exciting here in Arkansas, and it has been. Severe weather, heavy downpours, numerous watches and warnings already, and you can see the system approaching us, but it's just going to fall apart. A lot of the upper level energy will be moving away to the northeast, and by the time this frontal boundary that you see right there gets into North Mississippi, it's going to lose a lot of its luster here. So yes, there's a chance for a little bit of rain, but nothing widespread, nothing too terribly heavy. That's what we're thinking right now. No severe weather expected either. Today, or at least the last 12 hours, there's the arc of severe weather from Texas to the mid-Atlantic states. Now tomorrow, the best chance for severe weather just off to our north and east. There could be some strong storms here in the Tennessee. Oh, we just don't really envision any problems here in our area anytime soon. That's always a good thing. Let me show you this with future cast right now. A uh, pretty quiet evening unfolding. Tomorrow morning, no issues. By late morning into the early afternoon, we may start to pop a few showers and storms. And you can see on a scattered basis during the course of our afternoon and evening, we may see a broken line of activity move on through. By mid-evening, that should be on the wane, and we'll have a nice quiet start to our Friday and pretty nice all day long Friday with a northwest wind that will usher in some slightly lower humidity. Rainfall potential, a quarter of an inch or less, so we don't really envision a lot of moisture here over the next 24 hours, but anything is welcome. Variably cloudy tonight, upper 60s to around 70, and for you Thursday, uh, 80s to around 90, warmer southeast, cooler northwest, a chance for some showers and storms. Here's your AccuWeather 70 forecast, partly cloudy all weekend long, 88 Friday, 89 Saturday, 92 Sunday, lows in the 60s, that's not too bad, warmer again next week. The Bulldogs could be getting one of its biggest bats back just in time for tournament play. More on the possible return of the MAC next in sports. WCDI Sports with Tom Ebel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Mississippi State's offense fizzled in the SEC tournament, but a key member of the lineup is hoping to return just in time for postseason play. Head coach Chris Lamona says Elijah McNamee will begin swinging the bat in preps for the regional and hopes to know more on McNamee's status by Thursday. McNamee has missed time since May 12th after aggravating a foot injury against Ole Miss. The Diamond Dogs know Mac brings the clutch gene when the postseason rolls around. He's very eager, you know, it's a big bat in the middle of the lineup, lineup that we need, you know. Everybody saw what he could do last year in, in uh, postseason play, so obviously getting him back is going to help us a lot, and we're all ready for him. He's a great player, you know, he's a great player and he's got the clutch gene. 
um, and that's all it is. So we're looking forward to him. He's going to perform in the clutch, and he's going to perform day to day. So uh, we're excited for the chance to have him back in the lineup and a leader in our team and our locker room. Uh, I'm just really excited that he's getting healthy. He's, he's not going to miss this. So um, I'm, he'll be all right. Uh, I hope he's out there for us this weekend, but we'll, we'll see how it goes, you know. Uh, the body's a crazy thing. Uh, I don't know where he's at. I haven't really talked to him about it, but um, I, I know he's going to do everything he can. Just reaching its first Super Regional since 2014 is the main goal this weekend, but it's also about redemption. The Rebels will look to avenge last year's upset a year ago at home to Tennessee Tech, a season where the number four national seed fell short on the regional's final day. The starting lineup is full of guys that experienced the disappointment, but the mood in the locker room this year is new year, new result. Uh, you know, a little bit. We have some guys back from last year, and uh, obviously we want to put on a good show for the hometown crowd. Uh, but, you know, it'll, it'll motivate some of the older guys that played a lot last year, um, you know, to not end that way again. But, you know, it's a, it's a new season. Um, and we're just going to have to take it step by step and, uh, you know, play those games one at a time. Every year you get a different club. You know, every year, even with a lot of returners, they're different. You know, they're, they're older, they're wiser, hopefully they're better players. Um, but, but I know it does drive some people, and I'm sure it drives a lot of those guys in the locker room. And uh, a lot of them, you know, might be their last you know, time at this. And, and so uh, I know that they've mentioned that, you know, they, they want to leave their mark. Everybody wants to leave their mark here. Softball America releasing its first ever All-American teams today. On the, on the softball side, Ole Miss head coach Mike Smith was named second team head coach after leading Ole Miss to its second ever Super Regional. The Rebels outfielder Kylan Becker named to the first team, as well as Mississippi State catcher Mia Davidson. The Bulldogs Fale Lua named second team All-American as well. Ole Miss assistant coaches Ruben Felix, Ashley Chastain, and Katie Reeves also recognized. That's it for sports. Elastic, your weather is next. A pretty nice weather out there on our Wednesday evening. Is this Wednesday or Tuesday? Yes, it Wednesday. is. Okay, all these days are blending. Don't go together. backwards. Uh, no, we got to go forward. <laughs> Tomorrow, Thursday, a uh, quiet start, a chance for some uh, scattered showers and storms, just a 30% chance for some rain tomorrow. That's our best chance in the near term. If you don't get rain tomorrow, we will be dry probably through the weekend, through early next week. A little bit cooler, a little bit less humid, but in general, warm for the next seven. Well, We'll take that. Uh, less humid. Uh. For a couple of days there, <laughs> lows getting back down into the 60s. But, uh, you know, we're getting into summer now, and, you know, it is uh, what it is. Yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, definitely if you can get under some rain tomorrow, that would be good. Yep. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a